Hello and welcome to AmiPal. If I were you, I'd get the kettle on, make a cup of tea and settle down to have your mind blitzed with Migros 3.2 information. Welcome to AmiPal, the number one place on the internet for the sweetest Amiga content. Recently there's been a lot of hubbub about a brand new operating system for the Amiga. Yes, it's... No, wait, that's, that's OS 3.5. Uh, it's... Nope, that's 3.9, but it, it's going up, so surely the next one should be 4? No, it's 3.2. Now, that may seem quite confusing that we've gone from the last release from Commodore being 3.1, then to 3.5, and then to 3.9, then to 3.1.4, and now to 3.2. Um, there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into it in this episode, so that's for another episode that I'll create at a future date. Um, but for today's, uh, we're going to install Amiga OS 3.2. <gasps> Brand new OS! It's a, it's a fascinating time. Um, I've already taken a backup of my SD card that I use as a fake hard drive on my Amiga 1200. Uh, I did that using my Mac and this utility, and I'll put a link for it up here uh, for a previous episode I made for that very reason. Um, next step is to install these bad boys. Just try and get some focus on this for you. Uh, 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 somewhere around there. These, of course, are ROMs. Um, they will go inside the machine itself. They are used by the Amiga to boot the disk um, and provide various other features. So they need to go in there. Um, it is possible to install Amiga OS 3.2 without needing 3.2 ROMs. Uh, I think you can do it with 3.1.4 ROMs as well. <laughs> uh, but if you've got anything less than that, um, then you can basically do uh, a, a soft boot where it, it, you install modules onto the boot disk and it will reboot them and load those into memory so then it can use those as like your fake kickstart in much the same way that 3.9 did as it happens uh, but anyway I'm getting away from myself um, let's get those ones in the machine and let's carry on with the installation now one thing that kind of escaped your notice is that 3.2 um, comes on a disc. Um, this compact disc um, is not massively full because no things on the Amiga ever are. It's not large, is it? But it's obviously a great way to distribute hardware because it's it's a, a solid item that's not going to rot away like floppy disks. Um, on that CD, um, there are ADFs that can be copied over to floppy disks. Um, there's you can boot from the disk on your Amiga if your Amiga has a CD-ROM drive. Um, the ROMs are on there as well if you have the capacity to burn them. So there are ROMs on there for every single Amiga that you can imagine, um, except for obviously prototypes and ESCOM things. ESCOM A1200s and 4000s obviously will be covered by the A1200 and A4000 kickstarts are on there. Um, so let's just clear that up. Um, you also get this nice manual with it. Um, it's got um, a, f a few kind of FAQs on there, um, how to install CPU libraries, um, tells you which disks that are on here, the ADFs, which ones are bootable. Because um, one thing you have to bear in mind is that the new ROMs don't include the icon library or the workbench library. So if you try and boot up um, your SD card, TF card, hard disk, and you haven't copied those over to your disk yet, um, you actually won't be able to boot unless you've got a disk in there that's got them on. So the first thing I've done is put my SD card in my Mac um, and copy the icon.library and workbench.library from the install disk ADF. Um, it's the easiest thing to do. I've bunged it back in my A1200 before we get to actually installing 3.2. Um, so it's back in the 1200. It still works with the 3.1 ROMs that are in there. It's all hunky dory and fine, so all good. Happy that it still works despite those being copied over, as well as it should, because it's always going to check for the ROMs first. 
so we shall continue the installation. One other thing, um, when you get OS 3.2, Migros 3.2, um, it comes in wrapped cellophane as everything does in this day and age. Um, on the back is a white sticker uh, which is actually your key. Um, do not throw that away, you will need it. In fact, it's, it's really easy just to kind of peel off and just stick it onto the, the back of the, um, the manual. So do that as, as soon as you get it, do that, because um, if, if you don't, um, you're up a creek without a paddle, as they say in the States. Onwards. So here I am in Workbench. Um, I've popped my SD card into my Mac um, booted up into FSUAE um, to do the installation. Um, here's my workbench partition and here's the Amigros 3.2 CD. Um, I actually ripped to an ISO and uh, booted off um, off my SD card with, with this inserted as it were. Um, so this is the CD. Um, one thing you'll notice on here is this volume gauge down the side. Um, that isn't something that you'd ordinarily see um, on version 3.1. Uh, I think we last saw that probably in earlier states, back in like 1.3. Uh, there we go. Double click on install and start here and we get this um, request to basically saying double click on the insert install 3.2 disk icon, which is down here. Let's clean that up a bit. Don't need that. So in the install drawer, we've got different languages to run. I'm just the English. Just realize there's uh, English British in there. Proceed. Now I just want to install release 3.2. So we'll proceed with that. Um, and I'm going to bung it on expert. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I want to put it on the WB 3.1 partition and let's leave both for now i think english british yeah let's just stick with that okay don't need any printers british keyboard please now i'm not going to install glow icons um these are a nice new addition to workbench migros 3.2 um, but um, I want to keep things fast and uh, I might not necessarily have enough colours on screen for it, so no. Right, it's just going to back up some of the uh, startup sequence bits and uh, a CD0. Okay, so this is getting rid of some bits that aren't required anymore for 3.2. I've already backed up the uh, SD card anyway, so if, if this installation does go awry for whatever reason, I can always just re-copy it to the SD card. So here we go. And it's copying a ton of files as well. Going nice and quick. Obviously it wouldn't be this fast if you're installing from um, the ADFs uh, after they've been copied to actual physical floppy drives, which is possible, you can do that. Um, they're all there on the CD. This seems like a nice quick way of doing it, doesn't it? Okay, system's running 32-bit CPU. Um, yeah, my um, FSUE is set to run with a 68030, so um, it probably wants me to install a CPU library for that. Not that I ever had a CPU library for my Blizzard 1230. Never had one. Um, and I'm always surprised when there are suggestions that you, you need to install one. I've never had a problem with the 68030. Um, but, you know, since 3.2 does come with MMU libs for a 68030 processor, 68030, if you will, um, I'll probably install those after this. Okay, installation complete.
done. Right, so close these and uh, what else is on here? Uh, this is the directory with all of the kickstart ROMs in it. You've got 3.2 ROMs in there for every single Amiga. Um, so if you wish to burn them yourself, uh, they're split into ROM and bin files. And here's all the ADFs. There's a ton of them in there, obviously locale for all the uh, different languages as well. And some rather nice uh, disc labels as well if you want to print these out and stick them onto a physical floppy drive. Let's reboot this. Check the CD first. Pretty sure I did that. Ejects. Oh, okay, I've, I've quit it. Um, I'll remove the, no, not that button, I'll remove the CD from the emulation and we'll just start it up. Uh, we've still got Kickstart 3.2 in there. So this is loading from the SD card now with our fresh um, 3.2 installation on it. Now this is a bit of the startup sequence, basically checking to see if you've got a CPU library installed. Um, and obviously it's, it's found that I haven't, so it's just kind of giving me a little warning. Just hit return there and we'll boot up. So there it is, 3.2, installed. So the next bit is for me to get the physical kickstart ROMs installed in the Amiga and to get the MMU libs installed on this. So here we are again at the, um, the warning, if you will, for um, the lack of a CPU um, library being installed. I'm gonna hit return and just boot up. Uh, still in FSUA here and um, apologize, apologies for leaving it in scanline mode, but it's quite a nice difference, doesn't it? Kind of giving it that CRT look to it. So let's install insert an ADF for the MMU libs. Well, oh, shell files. There we go. I actually thought there'd be an installer on the MMU libs itself, but Never mind. I guess I, I should have ins inserted the uh, install disk. There we go. Let's pop that in. God, the speed of uh, emulated floppies. Install. We'll uh, double click on that again. Again, I've missed the English British one. Never mind. Chug, 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 chug. Speed this up a bit. Okay, so the selection I'm gonna do this time is the CPU support libraries. Yep, that's where I wanna put it. This will install a variety of tools and libraries to support um, different CPUs. So let's just swap the uh, floppies over. Okay, I've got a phase five board. It's a, a Blizzard 1230 slash four. There we go. Commands and libs going over. Interestingly, it's um, doing 060 and 040 ones as well. You, you'd think it, you'd just select the ones that you'd need, but um, hopefully that won't cause any issues. There's a drawer being created uh, called Mood Tools and a ton of bits popped in there. Okay, so I just need to insert, or sorry, eject the disks and reboot, and then we should no longer see 
the message at boot. Here we go. Aha, there we go. No more message and CPU libraries installed. Okay, let's get this cover off then. So I've already unscrewed the underneath. We oh, move that up with the cable. We'll just rest that in there like that. Okay, so we can see the ROMs here. Um, there are two ROMs on the Amiga 1200 because it needs two. Um, now one thing you'll see on the 3.2 ones that I've got is that you've got low and high. That's not where they go in the position because you'd think that low would go down here but low actually goes at the top as it were. So uh, you've got to make sure you get these in the right place. Now one thing you can't do easily is remove ROMs while the metal shield is on unless you've got some special ROM removal tool. I don't. Um, I've always relied on the good old fashioned screwdriver to kind of like leverage it out. So I'll need to remove the metal shield to get to that. Um, just to kind of poke that out of there. So uh, that's my next step. Okay, we have them in. The first ROM change this machine has ever witnessed. Now, shield back on, keyboard, floppy drive back in and keyboard back on case done up and let's boot it and see what happens powers on and lo and behold we have a 3.2 rom screen um, as you can see hyperion entertainment um, they are who produced it um, so i'm gonna put the sd card in now and there it is workbench 3.2 it's still kept some of my settings so like Workbench backdrop is still set to uh, some of my brother's artwork that I converted. Um, you'll notice that RAM disk is now down here for some reason. Uh, it's probably just due to the snapshotted area for it. So we can do a bit of clearing up and I can rename this 3.2 as well. Um, but let's get this on a tripod and find out what's new. So here we have Workbench 3.2. Um, Kickstart ROMs obviously in there as we saw. Um, I've already renamed the Workbench 3.1 volume to 3.2. Um, obviously it still remains ADH0 on the actual disc and still as SIS. So I've only had to change one assign that was specifically pointing at WB 3.1. Anyway, haha, 3.2 ROM. And we've got the latest Kickstart version, Workbench version, copyright Hyperion Entertainment developed under license. So they got the license to develop 3.2, um, got a bunch of developers to do a load of very good work um, to get this latest version off the ground and then uh, basically you're, you're paying for the distribution I believe of this new release. You might have noticed when I went in here that there is an open volume uh, item in the workbench menu so you can actually go straight to any of the volumes that are mounted which is very handy you know sometimes you might have a, a cluttered workbench with windows open all over the place and you really need to get into your work partition so that's a nice new feature um, since we're in the menus let's see what else we've got if I go into just my install directory here you're seeing a lot of new stuff actually that I'm not explaining um, we've got I don't know if uh, you remember from previous versions, but the uh, the actual arrow that points to new submenus, uh, that's actually changed to a hard arrow. And then the selections in the submenu now have this kind of hard circle next to them. Um, so that's an interesting change. Um, resize to fit. Uh, it's quite a nice one. Let's let's go for somewhere where we've actually uh, not that one, this one. So if you do resize to fit, it just it, it doesn't clean up the item the icons that are in there. It resizes the window to how they are already cleaned up. So if, if I do a clean up and do a resize to fit, 
it does it. So that's a, a nice new thing there. Um, show all and snapshot are all still the same, select contents and everything else. Um, view by, now, if it's on icon, um, you don't have any sort order because this is a new item too. So this one, I've currently got it set to sort by or view by date. Um, so newer items at the top, older items at the bottom, but we can reverse that order. So let's actually show some dates over there and we'll do sort order reverse. And there you go. We've got older stuff at the top and newer stuff at the bottom. Um, you'll also notice that directories are now placed at the top. Um, this is a setting that we can sort out in prefs, um, which is a nice new addition. Um, they're also colored. So they're no longer the same um, pen as the rest of the files within um, the directory. So that's another way of, of differentiating them other than them saying draw next to them. So that, again, nice new addition. Icons themselves, there's nothing really new in there from what I can see, but if I do information, Ta-da, we've got new icon information. Um, I believe this uses raw info, which I will confirm shortly when I have a look in WB Startup. Uh, but this is a, a nice thing, it's resizable. Um, you can see, <laughs> you can actually double click it if you need to, um, but you can see the, the alternative icon. Uh, in addition, um, you've got a, a more comprehensive uh, menus for icon info, um, so you, you can, basically make it frameless. You can copy over um, other types of, uh, another icon just by dragging and dropping it onto there. Shall, shall we try that actually? Let's, uh, oh, we're already in there. So if I do mega eye or movie quotes here, and then we can find a nice, let's have a look if I can find a nice, Oh, there's one. So we've got a, a read me here. We can do that and then we can just save it. And now I'll close that. <laughs> so now that's on there. So really easy way just to kind of um, sort out your, this is another, another one, another example. Sort out your icons if, if you don't really want new icons because they're taking up all the space on a, just a, a, a high res screen mode because you've only got 256 lines um, vertically. Um, you know, just drag and drop is a, a great way of doing it. What else do we have? Oh, I meant to say in the window one, we've got a, a, a find. So we can do, let's find mui.key and we'll look in sys and we'll set that off and there you go it's in wb 3.2 s directory mui.key oops sorry uh, interestingly we can open the drawer that they're in or we can view the file if that's possible can we view that file no unknown data type but i can i can open this uh, which is obviously a um show all files <laughs> anyway so that's the fine we've also got tools you might have noticed me uh kind of just drop into that quickly um auto arrange icons so i mean if i were to just kind of drag stuff around like this auto arrange icons there you go you can see that it's actually arranged it into alphabetical order which is quite nice um, I'm going to just resize that a bit and do it again. There you go. Isn't that nice? Has it snapshotted it? I don't think it has, so I'm just going to do a snapshot all. Um, but that's a nice new feature. You know, this is so often in, in Workbench we spend our time doing um, arrange icons and then snapshot icons and then all the, the window size is wrong, so then we need to do that and then snapshot all. This kind of halves the work I think so that's that's a nice addition uh, I've already talked about the fuel gauge um, 
this is something that I believe was in Workbench uh, 1.3 and then got dropped um, as we got to version 2. Um, I quite like it. Um, it's only on volumes, so if I drop into just one of the, the subdirectories, it, it, it doesn't exist on here because obviously it affects the volume as a whole and not individual drawers. Um, I'll go into my other ones. There you go. See, we're only <laughs> we're only this far up. Only 19% full on work um, on on the workbench partition. Um, so that's a nice new addition. You don't have to have that if you don't want to. Uh, we'll go into the prefs and we'll see um, how to change things like that. Um, in my moving, moving around of the windows and stuff, you, you have seen this uh, pointer change for the resize. Um, that's quite nice. Um, the only thing I will say is that it takes a while to disappear. So you can actually kind of go up here and it still does it <laughs> as you're moving things around um, but I think you can update that as well so um, don't hold me to that. Um, Workbench itself uh, is still exactly the same um, in terms of the, the, the desktop. Um, one thing I will say if I go into here and decide to copy state there over to RAM, no nah, it wasn't big enough. <laughs> Let's delete that. Let's try some more. So if I were to get all of those and drag and drop, oh, I don't have to hold the shift key. Um, this is something that I love from um, Directory Opus uh, Magellan, uh, is that there's no holding shift to do that. I, I'm not really sure why that was included in, in the original um, workbench, but uh, for whatever reason it was, maybe it's a safety feature. Um, you still can't click on an icon and press the delete key, but that's fine. Um, you know, it's just up here, but we do have Amiga delete. Um, so, you know, it's, it's that little bit quicker and um, nicer to kind of use both control forms. Anyway, I'm rambling, rambling on. If I copy that over, doo -doo -doo. here we go. Um, this is a commodity called Async WB, and it basically allows you to do stuff while copies are going on. Isn't that nice? And it gives us these handy progress bars for all the copying. So um, it again, it's, it makes Workbench a much nicer place to um, sort files out with. You know, obviously a, 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 a filing. Um, application like directory opus will will be a better way if you're moving lots of files around and doing lots of bits and pieces but let me show you something else yes we have colorful requesters as well resizable ones to boot so let's make it this big um this is a, another uh commodity that's in wb startup so let's dive into that now, just to, oh good, that was RAM. <laughs> WB Startup. See, there is a lot in here. Um, ignore Copy Mem AIO, that's something that I've got in there. Uh, but all of these are new, um, except for Click to Front, I think. That's uh, that's something I've always had. Now we've discussed raw Info, we've discussed Async WB, B menu tools this is a commodity to add menu tools so I believe these are actually Arex scripts um, that you can include within um, this section of the menu um, to basically add handy things um, I know there are people out there that have already started creating ones for WB 3.2 so um, I'm sure um, we'll be able to find those on some forums groups or Aminet soon. Um, Def icons. This is something that's been included with new icons for a while and it's incredibly useful in that it creates uh, default icons for um, items on your disk that don't have an icon. So it means that you can double click on, for instance, an IFF file without an icon and it'll automatically open it in multi-view. It's entirely dependent on how you have set up Def Icons. Um, Def Icons itself uh, is set up with a lot of um, 
of these uh, default icons uh, and file types, um, it doesn't seem to be pointing to a lot of applications at present. So that's probably going to require some manual configuration on behalf of the user. Uh, but once it's done, you know, it will save you time in the long run. Um, auto range icons, another thing we've already discussed. Sign wedge. I do believe this is if um, if you run a program and it asks for a certain assign and you haven't set it up, you can do a sign wedge and it will remember it. So rather than you having to go in and, and edit things all the time after the, the fact, um, you can do it and it's already done, which is pretty handy. Um, so there we go. Right, next up, prefs. Let's talk about prefs. Uh, now, first thing you'll notice is that these icons have kind of got this weird uh, Magic Workbench color scheme to them. Um, that's not due to full palette, which is actually no longer required. So I'm gonna delete that. Um, this is due to, let's find them, palette, um, where you can actually set uh, different presets, which is quite nice. Uh, but I've set mine to magic to get the, the uh, magic workbench colors for certain icons that I have. Um, but it's funny because the alternate is fine. And if I go into, and you know, you saw in WV Startup, everything looked okay. Um, so it's all a bit odd. I'm not really sure why, why they're displaying like that now. Anyway, some of these are exactly the same. Um, some of them have actually been redone in what's known as Reaction, which is a um, like a, a GUI toolkit, um, which evolved from the uh, class act, class action, one of those um, GUI t toolkit. Um, uh, I'll go into it. Basically, you, you can reconfigure how certain parts of the GUI look. Um, I'll enable a preview on this. We'll pop it up there. It's where you really wish you had more uh, screen real estate, as they used to call it. Um, so you can select uh, your refresh method to simple or smart. Basically means how how it will draw stuff. Um, can't really see much difference there. Uh, set various fonts. Uh, you can set a, a backdrop pattern if you've got one. These look to be quite huge, but they are mostly PNGs. Let's try pattern. There you go. That seems to just be white, but the, anyway, we'll clear that. I do like the fact that you can enable that preview and it just it's instantaneous each time you change something. Um, groups are these sections here. And you can see here I've set Helvetica as the font. Um, it's placed in the center. You can also make it a 3D label or not. That's how it is non-3D, that's how it is 3D. Um, you can set other various um, kind of presets as well. So GAD tools is the one that I've got at the moment. You can set it to thin, where it just uses as, as few pixels as possible to draw it. Thick, you get a bit more kind of shading and highlighting in there. Zen, that's, that's more of a, a kind of a, a copy over from MUI, which had like this Zen look where you've got light buttons and light requesters and drop downs. Uh, thin Zen, back to cat tools. Uh, you can increase spacing between things as well. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I haven't seen that. You can <laughs> increase spacing between objects as well so that it's not all kind of close together. Uh, you can include this 3D scroller, which is all right. Um, I'm not too fond of the, the pattern it's put on there. And it also makes these um, these buttons huge. Um, so I've just left it as default to, because uh, it's, it's nicer. So Reaction Toolkit. Um, not noticing anything different on, on here. Um, print to press, I'm, I'm not really bothered about because I'm never gonna print anything. Eye control, this is quite an important one. Um, you can set all sorts of things here, including resize from all sides. So if I can use that, it only takes effect on new windows. I'll have to close it then, won't I? 
See, we can resize from, from all corners now, all sides. And interestingly, also by the clothes gadget, I'd have thought that was, uh, that would have been a no-no. But, uh, oh, what have I saved there? <laughs> the palette. Let's, uh, let's put that back to magic, please. Thank you. <laughs> Eye control. Um, yeah, you, you'd think they would have um, changed it so that um, you can actually do that. One thing that I have noticed when you are sizing, if you're doing this, if you press the right mouse button, it just cancels it entirely, which is nice, but I think that's always been there. Um, can move off screen. This is also an another one. Let's rejoin it entirely. Where you can, oh, <laughs> hey. Uh, this is something Amiga OS 4 has had, the PowerPC operating system. Um, for a while um, and it's a nice new addition um, I don't think I'll probably do it because I like the idea of just you know seeing what you can see but uh, it works nicely we've got additional um, appearance settings for kind of proportions uh, where you can have like a, a square proportional look one by one kind of depending on what monitor you're displaying on uh, so that things always look how they should. You can give extra height to window and uh, screen title bars as well. Um, let's use that and see what happens. A bit chunkier, but maybe I should have made it much chunkier. Again, this is something that I think probably benefits more for people using RTG screens. Um, so that they can increase the size of the window bars. Um, compatibility settings, manage exceptions. Here you can add in um, program names, um, screen names, to basically make sure that these new settings don't uh, get applied because some things will fall over. I have noticed that, um, I'm just gonna set that back. I have noticed that Cinema 4D version two um, It'll open a screen and open various windows. It won't draw them properly. So whether that's something I need to pump into the, uh, drop into the comp compatibility bit there, um, that's probably something I need to do. Um, I was gonna show you something else in here actually in the palette. Um, so we've got these nice kind of classic presets, chocolate pewter, etc. New look. So just in case you fancy um, the Workbench 3.1 look, we can do that, yeah! orange and blue and it even gives you the um the black icons <laughs> so <laughs> that's a that's a nice trick um but i'm, I'm obviously going to stay with um magic workbench workbench pattern we'll go into that um this we've got uh, a, a additional Got workbench windows screen as per normal um, pictures or patterns you can see the picture i've got in the background like i said it's um, smart work of my brother's doing um, but you've also got some nice additional um, settings here to kind of you know if you've got a really good processor then you know whack the dithering up to good or best but if you've you've basically just got the, the standard CPU in there or, or just don't want the Amiga to be spending time sorting out a background, then um, set these to poor. Um, you can test it as well, so you don't need to come out each time you, you do a change, which is nice, um, which you probably want to leave this so that it's um, movable out so you can actually see what you've done. Um, I actually think that the uh, color rendition is much much better in 3.2 than it was in 3.1 i don't know if it's just me with my oh this is new so it's obviously better uh goggles on um but i think it looks better uh, i'll have to see if i've got any screenshots that i did on, under 3.1 or uh, may, maybe just like right way back up again to the disc to, to see if there is a difference but i think it looks better so whether that's um due to a, a change in the picture data type um I just think it looks nicer. Um, Def icons, default icons preferences. This is what I was talking about earlier. Um, so you can see there's a, a, an absolute wealth of file types in here. Um, 
which one was I going to point out? There was a very specific one. ADF. So here you can see an icon up here, which you click on and you get icon information, which is nice. Um, this basically allows you to set up the file types. Yes, we, we know that works. If we go into advanced settings, you can see it's basically trying to find files with uh, wildcard.adf um, after them. Uh, and it'll apply that icon if you do a show all files with an ADF file. The thing is, when you double click on this, that icon is actually set to mount an ADF, which is a brand new feature of 3.2. It's going to here. I think there was one near the bottom. So this one, Amiga Power issue 47 from 1995. Double click on that. And there's an ADF straight on your workbench. Um, this one has the absolutely fantastic deering do on it. Um, I, I urge you all to play that because um, it is a fantastic game. Let's go back into prefs. So here we are in reaction prefs again. If I hit the help key, we've got online help, which is a new feature. Um, it looks very similar to uh, Amiga Guide, um, but also includes kind of uh, an icon for what you've just hit help on. And it basically shows you what each of the uh, graphical uh, GUI elements does, um, which is a lovely help, proper documentation. Um, oh, interestingly enough, it's uh, English, British English I've set, but we've got Color War, Workbench Color War. Anywho, <laughs> just, it stands out like a thumb to us Brits. Um, Available tool types is a nice bit as well, so it tells you what each of the tool types does and what you can set them to, so that's nice. Um, that exists for all of the prefs um, and just kind of sits up there in help. And that appears to have frozen, so I'm going to reboot. Anyway, we're back. One thing um, that I do like is that if you hold shift and click on the depth gadget, sorry, <laughs> if you hold shift and click on this gadget, it puts it into full screen. But the great thing is, it doesn't remember it as one of your sizing uh, settings. So effectively gives you three sizes, full screen, and then your uh, original size, and then kind of a, an absolutely tiny size, which is another nice addition. Um, since we've got Webbench open here, I'm going to go to Tools. Um, these are much of a muchness. Um, HD Toolbox, staring at that, reminds me that um, 3.2 supports disks over 4 gig, um, so you don't need to do anything funny with um, device drivers and all sorts of other bits and bobs in order to get a large disk supported. And by large, I mean over 4 gig, so, you know. <laughs> That's not large these days, is it? Um, but for instance, my um, SD card plugged into this is an eight gig card, uh, but because I had it on 3.1, I only set it to four gig. Um, so there's kind of like half the capacity missing. That's something I hope to correct in the future. Um, it's going to show config. This is completely different. Show config used to just be a basic CLI output, but now it gives us ROM versions, exec versions, disk versions, uh, the processor in use, if you've got an FPU or an MMU, which I do, uh, the custom chips, um, map memory you've got with the upper and lower ranges, and also any um, expansion boards you've got plugged in. Obviously this being a non towerized A1200 and just a, a desktop Amiga, um, you've only really got the expansion slot in the bottom. So we've got this, which is correctly handled as, or labeled as phase five digital products, Blizzard 12 something O, um, which is exactly what it is. So that's nice. Uh, we've also got this text editor called text edit. This uses uh, reaction and there's a nice um, display of kind of what it's capable of. So I'm just going to open uh, do, 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 a text file. I game back up, that sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, and we'll just have a look at the genres. There you go. Nice text editor with 
selecting bits so you can set it to AREX and things like that to get certain um, keywords highlighted, um, file type options, which is nice. It's, it's a nice uh, little text editor. Basically, if you double click on a, a text file that doesn't have an icon, def icons will open text edit. I still use uh, Jano editor because I'm just used to it, but I'm sure I'll, I'll move across at some point. Um, all commodities have been updated in some way or other, but um, as I only use click to front, that's all I really know about. Utilities, Multiview has seen um, a lot of changes as well. Um, if you hold shift when you save as on an image, it will automatically save it as an IFF rather than um, trying to save it as something else. Um, you can, oh, that's something I forgot in. We've got um, Workbench Press. For some reason, I didn't go into this. Um, this allows you to hide disks, which may show up as like question marks for because they don't have something inserted into them or whatever, so you, you can hide these. Uh, this is where you hide your um, volume gauge. Um, you saw earlier that the uh, drawers in text view appear at the top, and you can basically set that to how it was, which was mixed, or top or bottom, which is quite nice. Um, <laughs> here we go, no color icons with a, a proper color. Um, this will basically make sure that you're not displaying the kind of high color glow icons, new icons, um, if you don't want them. Um, I've set magic workbench colors here, which probably means I could set them, I don't know, could I set them to something else in palette and just maintain this? I don't know. Um, again, this is icon quality. I've set it to poor. I've got 68030 at 50 megahertz, which is relatively quick, but um, I just like my workbench to be nippy. Um, with my 060, I might set that higher, but even then, probably not. Um, you can set a, a large border, you can set maximum file length. So if you've got a, uh, file name length, sorry. If you've got a um, file system that supports larger um, file names, you can make sure that you're able to edit that. Um, stack size, this, this is something that um, in the past, you might have just put a, a line in startup sequence to automatically pump up the stack. Um, so this is a nice addition here. Um, keyboard selection delay. Let's press help and see what it tells us. It's not going to tell us anything. That's interesting. Okay, maybe there's not help for this. <laughs> so next up, workbench screen title bar text. Here you can actually configure this to be whatever you want, really. Um, I believe if we do plus, we can add in things like um, system info, version numbers, release string, that's an interesting one, environment variables, and processor type. So for instance, I could add in processor on there, use that, there it goes, 030. I might decide to put 6.8 in front of that. Um, you can also have it so you have no title bar. So that if you need just those few extra pixels, you can hide the title bar. The menu will still be there when you select it, when you right click and it'll pop up. Um, and we've also got, well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's created uh, its own screen for it. Um, update delay on the screen title bar. So it's not, you know, if, if you find that it's sapping CPU cycles or something on, on lower end hardware, you can do it so that it's, fewer milliseconds are assigned to it. Um, but yeah, that's a nice change. Is that going to update? There we go. <laughs> now, data types. Um, that's a preferences for data types. If I go into devs, data types. The data type system has been overhauled. It's now quicker, more accurate. Um, Sound uh, data types cover more bit depths. I think that's the way of describing it. Um, basically, it just comes with a, a plethora of data types, um, so you won't have to go hunting around Aminet to find them. I haven't compared the um, performance of these data types versus, for instance, the, the, the fast, the, the data types from uh, Oliver Roberts. Um, 
but you know I'm assuming they're, they're based on latest sources etc so they should support pretty much anything you chuck at them uh, I'm not going to do anything with key maps or monitors or printers or anything like that because again you, you'll set that up when you go in anyway think expansion no no You can see help actually exists in system here um, and we've got a mounter as well so if you've got something that's not showing up on your um, on, on a uh, expansion board or something and you know you've plugged something in you can kind of mount it here manually which is quite nice so we'll hide that the shell has also seen an overhaul uh, I'll show you one thing that I found very useful for it if I do a migri and do new CLI. You'll notice also that um, the, the execute file thing is centered in the screen now and resizable um, and you can copy and paste this as well. Mega copy, there's no you know context menu or anything. So we do new CLI. I've did that with data highlighted. And look, it's in data. Um, another thing we've got in here is autocomplete. So if I double click tab it shows me all of the things that start with IN uh, in this case uh, it's basically found a ton of INs not just in data but across I mean in telephone that's on sys <laughs> but anyway I thought that was quite a nice feature um, data install there we go because uh, install itself is a command um, you can also drag and drop on here now which is nice um, as well as selecting and copying pieces so for instance I could copy that of course it doesn't know it doesn't exist in there so there we go um, we can also iconify it so we can iconify the shell go back into it whenever we want I don't do much in shell so I think that's that's probably all that I'm really aware of <laughs> that I'm going to use um, but um, if you want to know more of what the shell does nip over to the Hyperion website which I'll provide a link for. Now one thing you might have noticed if you viewed uh, any other um, Workbench 3.2 um, reviews on YouTube or forums or whatever is uh, glow icons which are also included um, on the disk and you can install them. I haven't installed them because um, I'm just using a usual Amiga screen mode and nothing kind of like high colour whatever and I just I, I need things that are not taking up much room so I've decided not to oh, by room I mean screen size um, so I've just left it with the standard ones but they can be installed at a later date now let's reboot this machine because I want to show you something else holding that down both mouse buttons for the early boot menu and curiously it flashes the power LED when you go into this okay so here we are you'll notice first of all at the top here press space to toggle between PAL and NTSC and return for 31 gigahertz modes so you can actually go into double PAL slash double NTSC from the early startup menu which I, I find to be really interesting that's you know particularly if you're plugged into something that doesn't display the 15 kilohertz and you need to get access to the boot menu very handy um, it also shows you the kickstart version here but let's go into these so boot options um, this looks very similar but now we've got a trace startup sequence where you can basically if I flag that it will go through the startup sequence line by line as we boot um, we've got update ROM modules this is the this is basically something very similar to what was in 3.5 3.9 where um, ROM modules would be loaded from your boot disk rather than from a kickstart ROM so um, I, because I've got the kickstart I don't believe um, it actually loads any modules from the disk although I'm sure someone will correct me if that's wrong enable system log so a bit of debugging you can log system details fail safe boot I'm not sure about that one I'll have to look it up for you I'm afraid but you can uh, enable and disable uh, boot devices as usual from there display options again we're seeing double PAL and double NTSC uh, up in the display type um, which you you know if, if you haven't got double PAL double NTSC, NTSC in your um, 
in your uh, dev monitors, then basically flagging these will mean you will boot up in double power double NTSC, which is pretty nifty. Expansion board diagnostics, um, more the same really, nothing much different here, but uh, yeah, I think that's quite kind of nice. So Migros 3.2, is it worth getting? Personally, I think there are a lot of new additions to it which make a big difference to how you use Amigros. Um, compared to 3.1, there's a lot there which just make life easier in the modern day and age, uh, in particular supporting larger hard disks, um, the newer tools as well, the newer um, menu items and selections available uh, just make life a bit, little bit easier in navigating Workbench and doing stuff with your files. Um, if all you're doing is running WebHD loads, um, then by all means stick with Workbench 3.1. Um, it will serve you absolutely fine. But I think the, there are plenty of benefits in the new Amiga OS. So uh, consider it. I'd say consider it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. If you've got any questions, please do shout. Um, please correct me on anything that I've got hideously wrong. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.